Hi ho and welcome to Woman's Dream. I'm James and this is Curtain Call where I'll be talking about all things theatre. And today is my review of The Mousetrap at St Martin's Theatre. Now just to make you aware, I have not researched this show, I have not seen it, I have not looked it up because it's a murder mystery and the last thing I want to do is look on Wikipedia or um, search into Google and it spoils it for me. So there's nothing I can really do a preview on, so if there are any intervals, I'm not quite sure because I, like I said I have no clue. I'll see you at the theatre, if not I'll see you after the show. Hey, up and back from theatre. <laughs> uh, there were an interval, by the way, um, but the reason why I didn't do an interval review is because it was such a small theatre, a beautiful theatre, but really small, and there were nowhere that I could have gone into a corner or in my seat because there were just a lot of people there, so it, it was really hard to find a, a spot just for me. Um, so that's why I didn't do an interval review. However, if there were, what I was going to say was it was very interesting. Just to make it very clear, I am going to keep the secret. I am not going to spoil this um, because it's a tradition. You, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't tell, you shouldn't say who done it. That's their little catchphrase. Um, and I am going to be really careful how I explain things because I don't want to give anything away. I want to start off with the production side first. Um, the set was realistic. It felt like you were in this grand like hotel. Um, it was just the same set throughout the whole show. A few furniture moves um, for, for scenery. But yeah, that was spectacular. When the, the curtain rose, I was like, ooh, that, that, that's a great set. Um, but you expect that because it's a play and um, yeah, if it's, if it's just going to be one set throughout the whole show, you, you expect it to be of decent quality. The lighting was really good. Um, whenever they had to dim lights um, for, special, like, for effects and dramatic reasons, um, that was really good. Um, very, very minimalistic, <laughs> I think I'm a teeth in, which really set the tone. Uh, and I liked that a lot because when when it needed to be a bit more like a what's going to happen um, It really brought that tension to it. There is something that is a bit negative though regarding with the production side and that's the sound the um, Performers did not have mics, which was perfectly fine You could hear every single one of them every single line which was great a great projection um, that if you're not sure what that means it means that you speak up when on stage so everybody can hear you um, um, but there was the radio at the beginning of the, of the act and a couple, couple of scenes um, throughout, throughout the whole show uh, but it was really quiet I could just hear what it was saying but I had to really concentrate and I hate when you have to do that when watching a show I think you should be able to sit back relax um, you should be like this, like, oh, what, what's it saying? If you're hard of hearing, you wouldn't have heard it. And that is a, that's a bit of a negative to me. There were parts of the radio which did produce some vital information for the show. Um, yeah, I just didn't... I, I, I feel like they should have umped up the volume because there's no harm, because it's there for us to hear as well as, as, well as the characters. But yeah, I think that needs to be worked on personally. On to the performers now. Now there's eight characters in the show. So there's Molly, who was performed by Nicole Agada. I think she performed the accent a bit too much. She was like, oh, Giles, like, oh, like, oh. And it's mentioned in the in the show that she's a young person. And I'm thinking she she's performing it as like a... 50 year old, really rich, really like everyone's beneath me, but that's not what the character's like. Um, so I didn't like how she was portraying the character. Um, I've never seen the show, I've never read the book, and I could sense that the character is not like that. So I feel like she overplayed it. 
which is yeah I, I, I hate being negative towards performers because obviously there must be good being at the West End but for me she overdid it um, Christopher Wren um, is another character who's this very like energetic and very camp character and he was played by Elliot Clay I thought he was brilliant I thought he was so funny his facial expressions his gestures his body language throughout were brilliant Mrs Boyle formed by Nicola Blackman she's like this old bitch in a way there's no way to put it Giles performed by Daniel Fraser I thought he played the character Good. Major performed by Damien Matthews. He was great. He was very stern and very like you know professional. I liked how he played his role. Miss Casewell, Sarah Moss, she played her character very, very well. Mr. Paravicini, if I said that right, Philip Voise, his accent was perfect throughout he played this like very slee character very mysterious and then the detective sam and benzo i thought he was great i know i went through a lot there um but i really wanted to just name them all because there's only the eight characters and i thought might as well just mention all of them my star performer i've got two in mind and that's elliot clay who played christopher wren and philip voise uh, who played Mr. Parafacini. <laughs> However, I am gonna go with Elliot Clay. He played the part perfectly. He was very mysterious, he was camp. His body language, his gestures, his, his whole performance was brilliant from start to finish. He has a little bit of a singing part, and when he sung, I was like, oh wow, he could go far, this guy. I've just been reading his portfolio, and he's mainly done plays. So I think he's one to watch out to see if he does go to the musical side. I have to say, Philip Voise is so close. Whenever them two were involved, I was like, ah yeah. I, I, I like those two, but yeah, that, that's what I want to say about the star performance. I'm not going to do a best scene in the show because there's only three scenes throughout the whole production, uh, so I think that's a bit pointless, uh, but the reveal is obviously the highlight of the show. I don't want to give out too much, so then it, it spoils the, the surprise for you all, um, but all I can say, it was, it was gripping, it was interesting, and when the reveal happens, it was definitely a <gasps> moment. Also, this show has been on the West End for 60 consecutive years. That is an outstanding achievement. And if I'm being honest, I can see why. Now, would I recommend it? 100% yes. I think it's a great show. Tickets were not that pricey as well. From what I could see, there's no bad seats. Even if you're out at the back, you're gonna see everything. I wouldn't recommend that you bring like small kids to it because it's just not, it's not scary or anything. It's just that they'll get bored. But yeah, I definitely say that you, you should go to see it. Now onto the final bit, my star rating. Um, I'm gonna give it four stars. Now that's just because of what I mentioned about the performers, uh, one in particular, I'm not gonna name her again. I just feel like she overplayed it. And also with the radio, uh, I can't give it five stars because uh, I think comparison to other plays that I've seen, I have, um, that I've, I would have or have given five stars. Um, yeah, I just don't think it's to that level on this night. It might be on another night. So yeah, that's it. That's my review of the Mousetrap at St. Martin's Theatre. If you're going to see it or have seen it, give me a message on Instagram or Twitter. Um, and yeah, I'm James. And that's your curtain call.